I'm really sorry for how long this video has taken to make. I've just been reading up on all of the gay and I think I've finally managed to compile a list together. Hi folks, Harry here, and today I could not be more excited to give you this video, as it's been in the works for a very long time. Today I'm going to be giving you 10 queer book recommendations. So being a fellow queer myself, I always try to read as many LGBTQ plus books as possible, just because I relate to them so much and I just think they're so well done. So I'm going to be giving you 10 books and giving you a synopsis of the book, why I like it, and the specific representation that is in that book, and maybe at the end I'll give you some bonus ones as well. Also, happy Pride Month guys! If you are a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I am so proud of you, and I think I'm just gonna make a separate video just giving you guys a message, but I am so unbelievably proud of you. Even if you haven't come out yet or you've been out for 50 years, I am so unbelievably proud of you. It takes a lot of courage in this world to be able to come out in this heteronormative society. So I just want to say a massive well done uh, if you've come out. If you haven't come out, then just wait until it feels right. You don't have to feel pressured to come out straight away. And I really hope you're accepted in the area that you live in. And if you're not, then I accept you. I love you. Just keep living your life. All right, let's get on with the video. Okay, so if you've ever been on the internet, you will most definitely have heard of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This book follows a teenage boy called Simon who is coming to terms with his sexuality when he becomes outed by someone in his school via email. In this book, we have gay representation and it's just amazing to read. I love this book so much just because it's really, really relatable and the format that it's told in, sometimes it's told like a novel and sometimes it's told in emails. And Becky Albertalli writes it in a way that is just so relatable, so funny and really, really appealing to a teenage slash young adult audience. Next up we have one of my all time favourites and that is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman. In this book we follow a 17 year old called Elio who's living in Italy and a 24 year old student called Oliver comes to live in his house for the summer. And over the course of his stay, the two of them start to experience extreme romantic feelings towards each other. This is not YA, this is adult contemporary, and some may consider it erotica. So if you maybe want something a little bit more hardcore, because I know some of you do, then I would highly recommend Call Me By Your Name. There are some extremely sensual scenes in this book, and obviously it's brilliant to read. This book mostly has bisexual representation, so if that's something that you can relate to and you're into that, then here you go. And the writing style is just so unbelievably poetic, you feel like you're there. The environment that's created is just absolutely stunning, and the writing, it is so beautiful. Genuinely, I think this might be the most beautifully written book that I have ever read in my life. It is amazing. Next up we've got one that people don't really talk about much and that is Here the Whole Time by Vitor Martins. So this book was translated from Brazilian Portuguese so it's the first translated work on this list and it follows two teenage boys Felipe and Caio. Caio gets to live with Felipe for a short period of time and just like Call Me By Your Name they start to experience romantic feelings towards each other. I absolutely love this book because from the start you know that Felipe's gay but you can just tell the whole time that there's something between Felipe and Caio because it's told through Felipe's perspective and you can just see him fall slowly in love with him and it is beautiful. This book has, I believe, gay, bi and lesbian representation so it is very inclusive and it's just so good. It is so, so good and no one ever talks about it. I would highly, highly recommend this to kind of YA fans. If you like Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda and you like Call Me By Your Name, read this. It is basically Call Me By Your Name, but a little bit more PG, but not quite because there are some steamy scenes in here. Just read it and then get back to me, tell me what you think of it. Next up, this is a book that I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel, but I die hard love, and it is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. In this book we follow a teenager called Michael, who you first meet when he's around six or seven, and you follow him up until his university years. And as he grows up, he slowly comes to terms with his sexuality, and he starts to get involved in the world of drag. I am an absolute sucker for books where you follow someone from their childhood to their adulthood, and I absolutely love that sort of thing, just because it offers so much time for character development. And this book has so much representation, it is so unbelievably inclusive. This book does come with some trigger warnings though, you've just basically got internalized homophobia and drug use. But what's amazing about this book is it's told in verse, so it's a really, really fast read, it's basically just like a really long poem, but not quite. It still does feel like a novel, but the way that it's written is just really, really unique. But also one of the reasons why I love this book so much, that only really applies to me, maybe not you guys, but a large portion of this book takes place in Larnaca, which is a town in Cyprus. I live extremely close to Larnaca, so it's really, really funny reading this book, because the main character goes to a place in the world that seems exotic to most readers, 
But for me, it's literally down the road and I just find it so, so funny. Cyprus isn't one of the most talked about countries in the books that I read. So when it does pop up in a book like The Black Flamingo, I really, really appreciate it and I absolutely love it. Okay, next up, it would have been illegal to not include these books on this list. And it is the Heartstopper graphic novel series by Alice Oseman. Heartstopper follows a teenage boy called Charlie who has been openly gay in his school for a long time now. And he starts developing a bit of a friendship with one of the sporty kids in his school called Nick. But obviously it's not just a friendship and they start to develop romantic feelings for each other. Like I said, this is a graphic novel series and the illustrations are stunning, done by Alice Oseman herself. And there is so much representation in here. You've got gay, you've got bi, you've got lesbian, you've got trans. I must admit I have not yet read the fourth one but I am absolutely dying to get my hands on it but my favourite one is actually the third one. In the third one not only does it build on everything that we loved in the first two volumes but it also introduces some really really hard-hitting topics like eating disorders and self-harm but it's not difficult to read at all unless you're really really triggered by those things but the way that it's done is just so mature and it's really, really well done. And I flew through these three volumes in about two days and I absolutely love them. Next up, we've actually got the first classic on this list and that is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I talk about this book all the time on my channel so you probably already know this book like the back of your hand just from me talking about it. This book is set in the 1950s and it follows a man called David who falls in love with a man called Giovanni after he meets him in a bar. But David has a girlfriend, so there's a little bit of conflict in her. It's a classic, it was written in 1956, but the language is so accessible accessible. It is just really, really, really easy to get through and it's really short as well. There is gay and bisexual representation in this book and it is so, so beautiful. This was one of the first books that I read in 2021, recommended to me by my English teacher, and I have so much appreciation for it because this book is probably one of the reasons why there is so much LGBTQ plus representation in literature today. Without this book, all of the books that I've mentioned in this list so far would not exist, so we have Giovanni's room to thank for that. I am in no way saying that this was the first gay book ever, but it was one of the first to discuss it very openly, and I think that this book is so important to the LGBTQ plus community when it comes to literature. Next up, I'm going to mention just an entire author's bibliography, and that is Cassandra Clare. All of Cassandra Clare's books take place in the Shadowhunters universe, which is basically a universe where half angel, half human beings known as Shadowhunters have to protect the human world from demons. There are currently five series altogether in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, very soon to be six, and each series has so much representation in it. The Mortal Instruments series has gay and bisexual rep. The Last Hours series has gay, bisexual and lesbian representation. The Eldest Curses series follows a gay couple from the Mortal Instruments series. And the Dark Artifices trilogy has gay, bisexual, lesbian and trans representation and it also includes a polyamorous relationship. But the great thing about Cassandra Clare's books is even though a lot of her characters are part of the LGBTQ plus community, it is not relevant to the story. So there are things like Call Me By Your Name and Simon vs. The Homo Sapiens Agenda where the fact that they are part of the LGBTQ community is very much so at the forefront. But in Cassandra Clare's books, it just doesn't matter. They happen to be queer, but it does not affect the story at all. And I absolutely love books like that where queer people get to just live the same lives that heterosexual people do. And I think that's really, really important for books to include. Next up, we've got a book that I finished yesterday, and that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book follows the son of the President of the United States, Alex, as he falls in love with the Prince of England, Henry. This book is so wild because it's such an original concept and it's executed perfectly. This book has gay and bisexual representation, and I have never read one book that has so much sexual tension between two characters. If you really, really like books where there is an unbelievable amount of sexual tension, there is no better book to read than Red, White and Royal Blue. It is so intense and it really, really is a beautiful story. And there are also very strong commentaries on politics, social media and general reputation. I really, really love this book. I can't believe it took me so long to read it, but I finally read it and I'm so happy that I have. Next up, we got a book that came out very, very recently and that is The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. This book came out the day after my birthday, which is really, really cool. And it follows a teenage boy called Sky who's living in a small town Town, and his life is basically ruined by a bully who posts something quite explicit 
exposing on social media. This book does have very similar themes to Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda, so if you really like that book then I would highly recommend this one too. And it can be quite depressing at times, but it does have a massive feel-good vibe to it, which is kind of contrasting, but trust me, it works. And it's just really cute. It is so cute. And then lastly, before the bonuses, we've got Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. This is another one of those books where you follow someone from childhood, and this time we follow a girl called Molly from her childhood to her adult years, as she kind of experiments with her sexuality. This book is very, very short, which might appeal to some of you guys if you just want a quick queer fix, and it has lesbian and bisexual representation. But it is such a heartwarming story. It's one of my favourite books that I've read so far this year. Okay, now we're gonna get into the bonuses. So the ones that I'm gonna mention now basically just have queer undertones. So they're not really stated or at the forefront of the story, but these themes are kind of woven in as subtext. One of my all-time favourites is the selected poems of Emily Dickinson. Dickinson is my favourite poet of all time, and her poetry has very queer undertones. We've also got The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was a gay man, and I think from the 1800s, this was the gayest book that you could really get. Because obviously, if it was too gay, then it would probably just be taken out of print. But there are homoerotic themes kind of woven in throughout. I also want to quickly mention Rope by Patrick Hamilton. This is a play from 1929, and it has kind of homoerotic themes. Okay, so that is it for my LGBTQ plus book recommendations. I hope you can come away from this video with at least a few recommendations, and I really hope that these books appeal to you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up, and please consider subscribing for more bookish content from me. All of my social media links are in the description below. Happy Pride Month, and I will see you next time with a new video. Goodbye.